So one of the things that I've always been interested in um, is compute shaders. It's just the way that they're, they're so incredibly different from every kind of programming. You know, you have single thread programming, you have multi-thread programming. They're like pure parallel programming, basically. And the, the, the things that you could do with them, um, incredibly powerful. You can gain so much performance increase. Um, and, and, you know, now they're, they're used everywhere. It, you know, general purpose programming, GP, GPUs. Um, they're the ones that do all this AI stuff that exists, right? So one of the things that I wanted to see if I can do is essentially use them or use, you know, compute shaders and um, GP, GP, GPU and, uh, and all that inside the web, right? And I found this, you know, library is called GPU.js. Um, it does exactly as, as, you know, you would expect. It basically is um, a... You know, you can get some matrix, you can do matrix uh, operations on it. Um, and apparently it uses, you know, um, GLSL and, and all that, under, under, or WebGL basically underneath the hood. Um, so you don't need to even have WebGPU to actually do GPGPU operations and all that. So, and, and the, the weird thing actually is, I haven't seen people talk about it. I haven't seen YouTube videos about it. Um, even though it, it's, it's, it's pretty good, I, I really, I mean, it's sort of what I want to go deeper in, um, in terms of you know c compute shaders on the web, let's say. And the beautiful thing about it is that you actually just write JavaScript. You don't you don't even write um, what's it called? You, you don't you don't even write like GLSL or something like that or HLSL or anything. You know, the v the variety of of graphics programs. Um, but instead, you just you know it it transpiles or whatever. Um, yeah, like a, a subset of legal JavaScript syntax. Um, and and it's, it's, it's really interesting. Um, the one thing that I want to do is to see if I can actually use it in uh, React and, and how, how would I actually use it in React and all that. So I made this uh, very simple app. Um, it just randomizes uh, colors uh, on a matrix. Um, and, you know, you can change from a GPU to CPU. You can... Uh, essentially to, to see the difference between perf the CPU performance and the GPU performance because it's just a simple operation of just like randomizing colors and all that. Um, my idea was, okay, well, I'll just make a loop, right? And, and this is where there's a, a loop count. I'll calculate the, 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 the same value over and over based on the loop count, right? And then it has the maximum size. You can see also that this is um, a Vercel app. So every, I just deployed it on, on Vercel. Um, also, you know, the, the code for this will also be on, on GitHub, so everything will be in the description. And before going actually to the code, I just want to say that um, if you're interested in this kind of stuff, um, graphics programming, uh, web web programming, gra web graphics programming and all that, uh, these are the things that, that, that I want to take the channel in and I've been making videos in. So if you're interested in that, please subscribe. Um, I'll be making content basically like this. Um, so... Yeah, let, let's actually take a look at the, at the code that I made. This is the main component that I have. Um, I tried to essentially organize how I would approach these things um, and, and it, what is sort of the, or the correct order of things, how to keep things clean, um, especially with, with graphics programs. So one warning I, sh I guess I should give to people that um, haven't done graphics programming, or haven't done anything like that. You can, get, you can easily make memory leaks. Um, you can easily shoot your foot. Um, I've, you know, crashed Chrome more times than I expect. I've actually um, broken one computer, like the, the graphics card, I don't know, it's just stopped working and I would get blue screen of death. It, it had, it was like an old laptop that had Windows. I would always get blue screen of death and apparently the, the error was um, a hardware error uh, and, and I was doing like some weird graphics stuff when I was doing this. So please be careful. Um, make sure to always, uh, and I'll, I'll show you know how to clean things up correctly in, in, in this demo, um, but, but just be careful when you, when you play around with, with, with um, graphics, right? So the, the main idea about how um, graphics programming works in general, and you know, similarly to how uh, GPU.js does things, is that you have a you know, graphics context. Um, or a GPU context, basically. And the way I like to think of it is that this is essentially like the specific GPU that you have, 
And the first hook that I should talk about is exactly the use a GPU hook. A GPU context in, in, in general, just in general GPU programming, is just, as, as it sounds like, it's the context that, um, you know, will have the information of the GPU, where it is, you know, things like that, right? And it's in that context that we can create programs, load in programs, unload programs. The programs are, you know, let's say in, in a game or something like that, it would be like a shader, right? Um, in CUDA and things of that sort, it would be like the exact, the actual program that you will run um, in, inside, inside the GPU, right? In GPU.js, the terminology is a kernel, right? And we're going to go see how, how we create a kernel and things like that. But the first hook that we can see in here is a, you know, GPU hook that I made. It essentially gets the GPU. It creates a new GPU if it hasn't been defined. That's why we keep track of a reference of the GPU, right? And just returns it in, in that case. And when we unmount, this is just basically a quick hook that I made. Um, I can actually just explain this very quickly. Uh, because of strict mode, the, the callback will actually be, will run initially in React. Um, this only happens in strict mode or like when you run dev, basically. Um, so I'm not going to go into details on what happens in here, but it essentially is making the, um, the same behavior that you would have if you actually deployed your application. Um, so yeah, when we unmount, so when we, uh, you know, whatever, um, component it gets destroyed um, we exit the page we go to a different page etc this code will run right and, and this is where we have to clean things up we want to destroy the context of the GPU once we don't actually use it so that we don't get into weird memory leaks and, and things like that right again th this is very important and like if, if you don't do this or you create a lot of GPU context I think uh, after 20 um, then like there's like a warning that, that Chrome will give. Um, so again, be careful with that, but this approach should have things very clean and you won't have uh, things, things like that happening. So this is the main hook that gives us the GPU context. But once we have the context, what we want to do is actually create a kernel. The kernel basically being a, a, a program that we will actually you know, create through, through the, the context and run it whenever we need to. In our case, and with React, we can just think of a kernel as, as a function, as just a GPU function that, that we can use and, and get our results from. Um, so that's where I made this use kernel function. And the use kernel, you can see very quickly that the first thing it does is that it uses a GPU and keeps track of the kernel reference, right? And this is obviously the same for the same reason, so when when we unmount the component, we can actually just destroy the, the kernel as well, just to keep things very clean. Um, the first function that, that I made in here that is of our interest is uh, a create kernel function. So this is where we first create the kernel. It has to, you know, we have to actually create the function at some point, right? And then we'd be able to actually send it. So it, it isn't like, um, like in JavaScript, you just make the function and then you call it, right? That's not how it works. You have to in runtime, create, you know, whatever the program is, right? And send it to the GPU and then be able to, to do whatever you need to do, right? So the first thing that we do in this function is actually get the GPU context or just the GPU, right? Um, if we are recreating it, um, you, you might want to recreate the kernel if you want to change the output size, if you want to do something of that sort, right? Um, so in our case, uh, because we can change the, the matrix size, right? Uh, we want to actually destroy it and, and you know, clean it up um, and recreate it again. So this is if the, if the reference already exists, right? And here is where we are actually creating the main function. Um, you can see we're creating a kernel. The kernel has a, a simple function that accepts a loop count, which basically loops over, you know, um, the loop count. So let's say if it's 100, it'll loop 100 times and find just the ran create random values basically um, for an RGB, uh, you know, or three number, three numbers that we're returning at the very end, right? We then use this RGB and I can, I can show you in here, we can, uh, let's see at the very end. Yeah, we use the RGB to create, to define the background color of every div inside of our matrix. That's the, the, the basic idea. Um, 
And so run kernel is, is, is pretty straightforward. So once we created the kernel, we just want to run it, right? So um, if we don't have the kernel, we'll just, I, we can just throw an error. But if we do, we just call the kernel, get, get, the, get the results from it. And I think, I mean, it, it wasn't working initially. Um, you can't just use as RGB. But doing this and doing array from solved it for me. I, in my opinion, I think the, the correct um, type, uh, let's see. Yeah, like the correct type of the kernel um, is actually like float32 array or something like that. In any case, this essentially gives us the, the RGB to the array that we can then just loop through in our CPU when we're creating the divs, right? Um, so that's essentially the, the kernel. Uh, I, I guess I, wanna, I should also mention the uh, CPU. So I made a run CPU uh, function as well. Does the same thing as you can see, just loops through everything um, and then just returns the result. Uh, but again, it has the loop count. So it is like um, we're going through every uh, part of the matrix and then we're looping, you know, depending on the loop count, right? So th this is just to see the, the the measure to measure the difference basically between the CPU and the and the GPU. Um, so that's essentially all we really need. Um, I'm not going to go through the markdown that I have in here. It's just basically what you can see in here. It's just the tailwind with it as well. Um, but we have the, our matrix. We have the size. We have the loop count. And this is just so you can see how much time it took. And so all these states are just to keep track of things basically. We have our kernel. Um, we have the, the create kernel and the run kernel uh, functions. The get random matrix. So this is the actual function that we'll be using to get the actual matrix. So you can see in here, we're actually calling it um, when we hit the randomize function, right? So that's the main thing. And, and this use effect is just when we change the size, we fill, it, fill the matrix with an empty array um, and we create the kernel, right? Because if the size changed, then that means the output value for the kernel has to change. And therefore, we need to recreate it, um, delete the previous one, and create a new one. Um, that's essentially all we need, really. That, that's, that's the basic idea. You can see in here that what we have is the, you know, let me actually refresh it. We have the, the matrix. It's all empty right now. We have the loop count. So we're counting 5,000 times. We're looping 5,000 times, and then we're able to create it. Um, and we can see, like, you know, if, if it's a very small value, the GPU actually performs worse. You can see it's almost instantaneous on the, on the CPU. Um, but on the GPU, it is like one millisecond. Obviously, you know, the, the, the basic difference between a CPU and a GPU is that the CPU is like this really incredible athlete that can run and do all these sort of things. The GPUs are just like simple... Uh, average Joe, um, so they might not be able to do the same things um, that, that the athlete can do, but if you have, you know, if let's say, can the athlete move 100,000 rocks, you know, at the same, at the same time, he'll, he'll, it'll just be slower for him because he'll, you know, he'll have to go carry things back and forth, right? But if you have 100,000 average Joes and each one just carries one rock, that's what, you know, it'll, they'll just be able to finish the work faster. And that's what makes a GPU a lot better than, than a CPU, right? So in, in a simple loop count, yes, it, it won't be that much. But if we increase it just slightly, so now it's almost 20K, uh, four milliseconds, that's, you know, it's pretty good. Um, the CPU is where we start to see that, oh, okay, 66 milliseconds, okay. If we increase it slightly more, CPU 170, GPU just seven. Right. And that's where we actually, you know, uh, the more you go in this, the more you'll see that this is actually, you'll see the difference basically becoming more and more stark. Um, so in here, GPU, uh, almost 100K, GPU, nothing, 10 milliseconds, the CPU, 300, you know, it'll, it'll start to chug. If we do, this is what, 200K, right? GPU, again, nothing, um, CPU, uh, yeah, half a second, basically. Um, and let's actually do, you know, an insane number. So one million loops <laughs> on, the, on the GPU, nothing. Still, 70 milliseconds, it's nothing that, that big, right? On the CPU, and I don't think OBS will crash. I hope it doesn't. Um, I don't think it will. 
Okay, yeah, it didn't crash. <laughs> um, yeah, so four seconds, right? If we increase the size as well, if we make the size 20, um, the GPU still, it, it's not a big problem for, for the GPU. For the CPU, um, I, I don't want to run it now because it just take a lot of time, but last time when I ran this, it took 15 seconds and, and Chrome almost thought that the page has crashed or something like that. Um, so it was asking me, hey, do you want me to wait for, for the page and all that? Um, so that, that's the basic idea for it. And yeah, like th th this is really what makes what makes um, you know graphics programming very powerful. Uh, you can parallelize a lot. You can do all these sort of like weird things. Um, I haven't really thought of like projects to make with this. I, I want to actually do more projects with it, um, but it, nothing really comes to my mind as like um, like where would you use this in, 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 in on the web? Right? When do you need to use this on the web? And the only example I can think of is that if you're making something like um, Google Sheets or, or something like that, where you have like millions and millions of, of uh, rows or something like that, you need to do some kind of ca computation on it. That's on the front end, right? So that won't really, you know, be as as straightforward. Let's say if you if you use um, just the CPU, but if you use a GPU, if you use GPU.js, be a lot easier for you, right? Um, they do have some examples. I can sh maybe show some of the examples. It's on their web page. Um, a lot of video manipulations too. So you can do like direct video manipulations on 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 the front end, right? Um, right away, basically. Um, you can, you know, Julia sets. These are just more mathematical Mandelbrot sets. Um, Game of Life. I think I saw the Game of Life somewhere. Yeah, Game of Life. Um, you know, th things of that sort, heat maps, you know, stuff like that. Um, essentially, whenever you need to do a lot of computation that that is on, on the GPU, but you still need the information on the CPU, right? So isn't it isn't like um, some rendering thing that you can do with GLSL and, and with, with WebGL and, and all that. You would actually use um, this, you know, this library. Um, the, one th the last thing that I should mention is that some people are saying, oh, is this project dead and all that. I don't think it is. I mean, I saw like um, last time it was um, used was like eight months ago or something. Yeah, eight months ago it was it was actually being used. So yeah, it, I think I mean people don't know about it. I haven't seen people on on YouTube talk about it. I I don't know why. It's, it's pretty cool for for what it does. Um, I, I certainly want to, you know, start using it more, maybe cont contribute to it. I'm not familiar to how it, it's doing this sorcery, right? They, they even say, like, what is this sorcery, right? Um, so if, if you're interested in that, I, I highly suggest checking them out. If you want to support them, you know, I think they have some, some page to support them as well. I'm not sure, maybe at the very bottom. Um, yeah, become a sponsor. You can become a sponsor as well. But yeah, really, I, I think people should use this more, um, especially the fact that you can very quickly be able to, to get something running. I mean, this, is, this isn't this is very complicated, really. Uh, where is it? The, the use kernel. This is very s simple to create, given the amount of power that it's giving you. So I highly suggest uh, checking them out. And hopefully, this can be like an example of, of how to use them properly in React. Um, again, what you saw, all the code in here, it's it's going to be in, in a GitHub repository. Um, the, the This page as well is, is already, I deployed it on Vercel, so everything is there too. You just want to quickly check it out and it'll be, everything will be in the in the description of the of the video. And uh, yeah, that, that's essentially what I wanted to share today. Um, yeah, I, I this is, I mean, I want to play more with it basically and, and I hope I've convinced you to, to actually at least check it out and, and maybe do some tiny project with it. Um, it doesn't need to be with React either uh, if you want to just use pure JavaScript. But uh, but yeah, thank, thank you so much uh, for watching. If, if you've reached this point, thank you for sticking around. And yeah, uh, take care and bye-bye. And